Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Canary Room. It's episode nine, we've got thrills and spills and uh, heartache, of course, heartache in the episode today. It's the to-do list because it's the first episode in May. Uh, but before we kick off and before we see the Norwich Notebook, we check in with the fights. Before we get into the new colour corner, you can probably hear the din in the room at the moment. I need to say some thank yous. So firstly, huge thank you to Alan Horry, to Martin Gentles, Beethoven Dellison, Mike Burling, Jonathan Dubry and Donald Skinner-Reed for all of your very kind donations to the show. Thank you very much indeed, chaps. Very much appreciated. A very, very special thank you as well to a lady who watches the show. You know who you are. Um, huge thanks. And we've got a little appearance today from, um, well, from this little lady <coughs> who, this little lady here, in her little outfit and her first time in the canary room there she is she can see herself so she's got a little little outfit which is absolutely gorgeous so this is charlotte everybody um she's here to celebrate the fact that we've got 10,000 subscribers to the channel and we're absolutely delighted lots and lots in store on the show today i'm gonna pass charlotte to mum so here she goes <laughs> and there, listen to a cry because daddy's no longer here. Let me grab my copper. We've confirmed some on the roads as well. So in May, I will be going back to see Keith Ferry. So look out for that. Possibly late May, that will come out on the channel. Um, I'm also trying to confirm Pete Harrison, the Zebra King, uh, and Terry Kelly as well. So we will be back on the road now. Things are opening up. As always, grab yourself a cuppa, sit back, and enjoy the show. It's, as always, it's thrills and spills and heartache in the canary room. Um, and, you know, I think this time round, every single variety of birds done their bit to let me lose more hair, if that were at all possible. So we'll start with the fifes. We've um, a really good flush of hatchings. You remember in the last episode that we had uh, some e uh, eggs that were due um, and they didn't hatch, they hadn't hatched. They actually hatched two days later. So they were at 16, 17 days by the time they did hatch. Um, you can see some of those young chicks here and you know it, it's always lovely to have them uh, hatching in the room so we've got a, a really good show of the first round which um you know which sets us up nicely uh, we have got birds now that have laid their second round so we put uh, nest pans in at the other side of the cage front and um we've got some really uh, good sort of second round laying going on which is uh, which is encouraging we've got um some miracles um and, 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 I, and I, I don't use the word lightly um the uh one of the cages down here cage 29 um there was a uh, three dark uh, birds um and a norwich and, um, you know, the hen had been doing a really, really good job. And, and I'd noticed one of the young had fallen behind a little bit. So um, I picked it up. I scooped it up. Uh, I had a look at it and it had black spot. And um, that can normally be fatal uh, if not if not picked up. And, and those of you who've seen the episode with Dave Rands, and I think that's had about 23,000 views now. So that's a lot of you. Um, we'll recall Dave said if he ever sees it, what he does is he picks that bird up and he and you know he puts that nest under another hen just for a feed and, and it goes um well it works uh, i can testify it absolutely works so that little bird is um is with uh, four other nest mates four light mark birds uh, so it's very obvious which one that is we see it here um and then in the same cage i'm a bit concerned about the hen uh, because she didn't seem to be feeding so I um, there's Norwich in there there was two dark birds there as well so I, I topped them up and then I came in one morning and um, 
One of the darks had rung them. One of the darks was on the cage floor. Now, quite a big sized chick, absolutely lifeless. So, um, bit, bit sort of disheartened. Um, so, you know, picked it up, felt absolutely stone cold, didn't move, you know, legs stretched out, completely expired. Uh, so, popped it onto the, um, have a, uh, been in the room, just popped it onto the bin and, and you know, got about my day, a little bit disheartened as I always am when there's things like that that happen in the canary room. And uh, I came back in later that evening now. I'd been in and out at work, so probably seven, seven hours later. Came back in, I was just topping up some of the, um, the native finches and I saw this chick move although I thought I saw it move and I thought oh, God, God, it can't have moved it you know it's passed um, anyway I, I picked it up um, and and it moved in my hand and I cupped it and I breathed on it and, and I kept breathing on it and, and I put a little bit of food down it I, I popped its beak in a little bit of water just to get a little bit of fluid in it as well just to try and revive it and then I popped it back in with a uh, with a hen, uh, unflighted hen, who's already had three chicks of n not a same age but a similar size. That was four days ago. I'm pleased to say that bird is still with us. So, you know, an absolute miracle of a bird. So, just goes to show, you know, just goes to show you can uh, not be too keen, not be too hasty. Um, with that and, and you know normally if, if something's ejected from the nest I will try and bring it back round but with this it, you know as far as I was concerned it was gone so good news bit of good news there as is the uh, the four young that came away from our um, five hen that we lost they're all uh, feathered up now they're out the nest they're starting to pick up for themselves which is great so keep an eye on them over the next few weeks um and then what I've been doing as, as we move into the second round is, is really thinking about where I want to get birds from. So one of the things I've done with the green yellow hens is there's two uh, heavily variegated buff cock brothers, both very nice birds. One is visually better than the other. Um, and so second round, I've ran him, the visually better one, over the majority of the green yellow hens so actually he'll cover one two three four five green yellow hens um, i've got some young off him already i like the look of them they're only just out the nest his brother um i've got four young out of his brother they're starting to come out the nest now as well and they look good too so what i will do is i'll use his brother again i'm just giving him a rest at the moment i'll use his brother again for the third and final round but as we're in the the sort of the the pinnacle stage the, the real sort of peak stage of the breeding season I'm looking at those birds that I, I want to make sure I get, you know, uh, a good yield of young from. Um, so what I've done today, I, uh, I set five, six nests last Saturday. Uh, I've checked them today. Um, one of the nests, uh, and it's a hen, and we'll see her young chicks now. You know, there's, there's four chicks here. They're out of the uh, really nice dark yellow cock, and, and there's something to like about all of these birds. I checked her nest today, um, second round, and they were empty, um, which was hugely frustrating. Uh, there was one full egg in there. Um, I've got a couple of nests of clears down as well. They had some eggs full, but also some eggs empty. So what I've done is taken the one full egg from her, popped it in a nest of clears. I've lifted her. So I've still got probably five or six hens set uh, and down. Um, so if I need to move young around when they all hatch, I can do. Um, so I've lifted her and I've, uh, I'll run the cock bird in with her again. So, you know, with the fives, we've got some good numbers. We've got birds now coming away. We've weaned some birds in the to-do list today. We'll look at weaning young and, and what I do to wean young. And we'll wean some young today uh, as well. So with the fives, you know, it's a um, good start. Really good start. Really happy, really happy with what I see coming through. 
caught on camera, little cinnamons, young. They're actually due tomorrow, but one of them's popped out early. You can see it here hatching. Uh, so really, really, really nice start with the fives. Just um, really, really pleased with it. So that's our fives. They're doing okay. Well, I'll tell you what, let's head on to the to-do list right now. So the to-do list today, we've got three broad areas that we look at in May. The first is about cage management in the breeding season. The second is around the cocks and, and the second round. And the third is weaning the young chicks. So cage management, I've had a couple of questions in about this. Um, you know, how do you manage, what do you do to manage the cages during the breeding season? Well, I have um, a relatively sort of strict routine. I like to try and avoid disturbing the birds as, as, as little as possible during the breeding season. I don't want to give the hens any reason whatsoever to stop feeding chicks, to abandon nests or, or anything like that. So um, what I do is I'll... Uh, clean the cages just before I, I set the round of eggs. So not a deep clean, just take the, the cage floor away, scrape the perches and I'll set the nests. Um, and then I'll leave them pretty much untouched until just before the chicks are about to hatch and then I'll change the cage floor again. So as soon as that first yeah, um, egg hatches, you know, the, the cage floor gets changed. Then I'll, um, I'll pick up rubbish over the first sort of 15, 16 days of the chick's life, but I'm not really that keen on disturbing the cage too much. I know some people do. I know some people hoover their cages with chicks in the nest. I'm, I'm less keen to do that. So I'll keep an eye and, you know, if there's the cage floor's overly fouled, I'll, I'll, I'll clear the mess up. Um, but before the chicks are about to leave the nest, I'll do another clean. So I'll take the furniture out, I'll take the, the cage floor out and I'll give it another clean. And then in between rounds, when I wean the birds, uh, the young birds, and just before I put the, um, the, the hens, I set the hens on their second round, I'll do a deep clean of the cage. So I'll get all the anti-mite treatment in there. I'll scrape all the perches. I'll soak the perches. I'll wash the cage front, clean the um, drinker, clean the seed hopper, the full, the full nine yards. Um, and that's how I do it, just to keep on top of the hygiene. You know, as the, the sun comes out and it's getting a little bit warmer now here in the UK, you've got to keep an eye on those little nasties, the little mice. Um, inevitably, there'll be some here, there and everywhere, I'm absolutely sure. So that's it with them. Um, and then we've got to think about the cocks for the second round. Now, we've got to be really careful here because um, we've got a balance to strike. The vast majority of my five hens at least are on their own. So what you don't want to do is get them to go to nest too quickly. Now what I start to do is I, I wait till the chicks are around about 14, 15 days and then I will reintroduce the cock bird. Um, often the hen will squat straight away and the cockbird will mate her and tread her straight away um, and then I remove him straight away. I won't leave him in at all in the second round if there are young in the nest. Um, <clears throat> occasionally they can get a little bit aggressive. That just means she's not ready so I'll take him straight out. <clears throat> what I'll do around about 20 days is I'll put a second nest pan in. So I'll put it in the other side of the cage and as we pan around the canary room you can see that there are a number of cages with two pans in. Now invariably what happens is the lovely little chicks that are in the nest as they jump out they'll jump into the new pan. Um, so I actually before I set that pan I'll hoover it out I'll give it a good spray of mite spray and I'll recreate the nest and I'll set it again there. So a bit of vigilance you know Normally, normally the second round, the birds are in better condition. So normally the second round, you could expect, you know, a, a higher yield of full eggs. Not always the case, but normally. And our third point, well, a third point really is around weaning young. And um, we've had a, a number of questions around this, you know, when do you re wean young? When, what, what day? What's the right time? Um, need to move away from the, the idea of there's a day, you know, a specific day after a number of days that you can wean them. Because 
that's simply not the case some birds are self-sufficient on their own you know 19 20 21 days you can see them picking up you can see them feeding you can see them drinking you know they're going to be okay um, and you can move them away at that point you can see here i've prepared the cages um, so i've got the uh, hoppers i've got also the um drinkers on there i've got the uh pecking boards in there I've got finger drawers in there uh, I'll put pearl morbide in the finger drawers I find that helps in the weaning process and more often than not I'll put a little chunk of apple in there too now I'd only put the one perch in to start with and I have that low down I, I used to not put a perch in um, but I try and wean sort of three four and five young together I think they're you know they, they kind of they pick up on the behaviors of others and they're they're, they're quite happy to, to sort of pick up just keep an eye on them they will chirp they will call for the parents as well and um, with the uh, yellow agat mosaics the uh, the cock was becoming overly aggressive with some of the young so what I've done there is I put a wire divider in between them and um, they could still feed the uh, yellow mosaics through the wire divider so that's another option where you've got a double breeder just wire divide them off but with the fives I'll take those birds away uh, I'll pop them in their cages and, and I'll just keep an eye on them. They'll chirp, they'll cry, and they'll sleep an awful lot. None of those things are things to worry about. Um, as I say, I use the uh, pearl mold by because I find the moisture in there helps them, you know, not get dehydrated. So that's our to-do list. We are going to wean some young uh, now, so we'll take a little look at that. Um, coming up after the... Weaning, well, native diaries. I love uh, seeing the young uh, birds, whether they be natives, whether they be canaries, weaned and, you know, just keeping a real eye on them, seeing how they develop. Um, been a, a good two weeks in the native diaries, to be fair. Um, haven't managed to get another uh, goldfinch in, unfortunately. And um, thanks for everybody who did get in touch, um, but haven't managed to get one in. So uh, I've put for now an Irish fancy hen in there and maybe try and get a, a couple of sort of mini-ish mules. Um, with a view that if we can breed some, you know, hopefully they'll be useful additions to the
the canary room next year as as feeders because well our irish fancy have um have driven me to distraction uh so we had um, a Siberian goldfinch egg under the iris. She left it on the 14th day. No um, no issue with that, really. She sat tight. Um, <clears throat> it was full. It was stone cold. I popped it under a canary and it hatched and I was absolutely delighted. Um, but I knew that that canary was only going to have uh, that, that hatch. It, it wasn't due for another seven days here, young. Um, so I I moved it under the siskin because the siskin eggs were due that next day um, and fortunately the siskin hen fed it um, and, and continued to feed it for, for a good few days um, uh, but unfortunately as we can see here I, I pulled it out and, and it got black spot. Um, I did pop it in with another canary to see whether or not uh, I'd, you know, lightning would strike twice and I'd get another another crack at it, but <clears throat> we lost it, which was um, a little bit disappointing, uh, but it is one of those things. Um, so back onto the siskins. Well, we've got a few little shots here of the, the siskin young. It's the, the first time that I've... Um, that I've successfully bred siskins. I say successfully bred, I have had them hatch before, but um, not got them as far as I've got them. Uh, I've rung these here, as you can see, um, and we can see the mum is in and out. She's, she's getting a few bits and bobs, various different feeds. And we can see that the cockbird is behind the wire um, just to stop him interfering too much with it. So some good news on the siskins. Um, the goal, uh, the bullfinches behind me, uh, they um, have started to build up again. Their eggs, unfortunately, were empty, as were the goldfinch mule in pair. The goldfinch, the bullfinch mule in pair above, they were empty. Kind of expected it, to be honest. It was very early in the season for them to be going down. So not a problem, um, not a problem at all. She's picking up already. We've got some shots of her picking up here. Um, so hopefully she is, you know, building a decent-sized nest. Hopefully she'll go down again quickly and um, it's it's pretty much that time to be honest with lots of the natives and um, the uh, red poles the uh, really really nice cobalt red poles i got from alan and um, they have laid four eggs i've taken the opportunity to set the other two um from the the pied the white pied as well i don't think they'll be full but i've set them they, they can't hatch if they're in an egg trawl uh, so they they've um they've laid four now couple of the other cobalts, the, the sort of white wing cobalt hen, she's picking up, they're both picking up actually, and, and the, the pairs behind me here are in and out the nest box, so <clears throat> as we're in May now, you know, expecting to see those to be a little bit more advanced. And then outside, well, a little bit of good news outside as well, because uh, the uh, the green finches, um, see here, long shot, but you can see um, she's started to pick up, starting to show a bit of interest in the nest pan. So hopefully they'll build up over the next week or so. And our pair of Siberian goldfinches. Now, I wasn't sure whether they were a pair. It's a, a classic cock split Latinet, uh, satinette um, and a, a lutino hen. Um, and they've just started the hen. It is a hen. She's just started to build a nest. So so that's encouraging with the um, with the natives this time round. Let's see where we we get with them. I think you know there'll be more heartache, I'm sure, along the way. But um, really pleased so far with the um, with the sort of three siskin young. Hopefully the cobalt's eggs will be full as well. Hopefully we'll get more red pole eggs. Hopefully we'll get more chicks. Stay tuned for future episodes to see that. Well, from the natives, of course time to go for the Norwich. So the Norwich notebook, well, you can possibly see behind me, we've got um, Norwich on, on nests, on eggs, on pot eggs at least. Um, three of the four Norwich hens have now laid. Um, none of them are sitting their own eggs. All of the eggs are under the uh, new colours. Um, we have got one Norwich chick in the nest. It's in feather now, um, probably about 14, 15 days old. So a way to go for it still yet. We won't count it. It is rung though. 
Um, Norwich are, are being, you know, like Red Bulls. Uh, they're being a little bit testing. Um, so the hen up the top here, um, she has laid uh, four eggs. Um, I've set them. She's got pot eggs underneath her at the moment. There is, um, she's actually come off the nest today. So she's been down for seven days. So I ran the uh, the yellow cock bird here again um, in with her. They've mated a couple of times today. So what I'll probably do is take her nest out uh, maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday, um, and I will let her uh, build up again and hopefully we can get another round out of her. And I may leave those under her this time. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, run too many out of them. Um, interestingly though, uh, I have um, candled the eggs today. So there are uh, four of her eggs under um, this hen here in cage 69. Um, at least two of them are full. I say at least, I didn't mark them. Um, there is um, five eggs in there, or there's six eggs in there. Five of them were full, so four of them were from her. So I'm saying at least two, uh, probably three, hopefully four. Um, but being full eggs and then hatching, I've, I've found the hatch rate with the Norwich this year has been a little bit disappointing. So, you know, we'll see. We'll see how they develop. Um, the hen over here in cage 53 with the uh, the younger buff cock I got off Gary. Well, he's filled eggs as well. So the older buff cock filled eggs in the first round. He's filled eggs in the second round. So I know that the, uh, the, the three cock birds here at least are all firing on all cylinders. I say I know with those. I don't know with this, uh, this cock bird in here with the white hen yet. Um, I've only just set their eggs. She's just laid three. Um, I have seen them mating again, but they've only been set a couple of days, so I haven't managed to check them yet. So nice, nice sort of steady start with the Norwich. You know, as we move into May now, um, I expect them to come into an even more advanced breeding condition. Um, I'm very much looking forward to going to see Keith. Uh, Keith Ferry um, and filming uh, another episode there with Keith um, and seeing how he's getting on uh, with his Norwich this year as well. So so far so good um as i say so far so good with them ah, just i am smitten though i'm absolutely smitten so from the norwich new color corner time next well the new colors have um so far probably been the most productive certainly the grey wings and the yellow mosaics so we've got five yellow mosaics away now on the sticks and and we will move them from the cage they're in uh, to to a different cage in the canary room over the next week or so uh, just to give the parents the full double breeder again the um the grey wings, well, there's six of them away, so three from each pair, that's nice. I'm um, really pleased with that, and there's a couple of Irish fancy young in there as well. So, a couple of, well, three lots of firsts. First time I've bred yellow mosaics, first time I've bred Irish fancy, and first time I've bred grey wings. So, they're all there. We have got a couple of agats as well in the nests. Um, there's one just in here with a couple of fifes, and there's another one with a couple of fifes up there as well. They're um, still messing about a little bit. <clears throat> the agat mosaic so I'm, I'm sort of <coughs> I'm sort of um, I'm sort of leaving them to it to be honest um, they are um, you know homebred birds so they were bred in the canary room last year I am I'm gonna see I'm gonna see how they get on um, I am not gonna use them as feeder birds they they've not proven uh, reliable enough to put Norwich eggs under them um, so the uh, agat mosaics, um, as I say, a little bit of a challenge. They are laying again. This hen here is on a third egg. This hen here has just laid the first egg today. The grey wings, well, they're set on five eggs and six eggs now. They're, they're all full. Um, some of them are Norwich. Some of them are their own. And then the, uh, the yellow mosaics at the bottom, they're on um, actually on grey wing eggs. Um, so they've got grey wing eggs. Uh, and Norwich eggs underneath them and what I've done is I've kept their eggs to one side I've popped a couple under fifes 
um, here and there just to try and get a few more of those out um, they'll be they'll be useful they've certainly been really good feeders this year so they have uh, they've earned their right to stay in the canary room I think in in future years to come so New Colour Corner, you know, something really nice. And thanks everyone as well for getting in touch. There's been a lot of interest, particularly in the Grey Wings. So thank you everyone who has, uh, who's made contact about the Grey Wings. Um, <clears throat> looking forward to seeing how they go. I will move the, the Grey Wing Youngs to the very bottom cages in the Canary Room over the next couple of weeks. When they get to 45 days, I'll start colour feeding them. Um, <clears throat> and of course, what I don't want to do is ruin any of the exhibition fifes now. I'll only colour feed the the grey wings, the the red ground birds. I won't I won't colour feed the, um, the 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 yellow mosaic. So I'll keep those up above. Uh, so probably more on colour feeding at a, at a later episode, I guess. Um, so bird of the week this week. Well, that time, let's take a look. Well, for Bird of the Week this week, something a little bit different. It's Birds of the Week. Now, this is one of them. This is one of our first round fifes. I've just put this in a show cage for the first time. Um, it's a baby in nest feather. Uh, so, you know, we're not going to make any judgments on this as a bird at the moment. What I would say um, is quite happy about its steadiness, given that it's never been in the show cage before. And I think steadiness is very much bred in to the birds. Um, this is uh, one of four. Um, this is out of our, well, our only dark yellow cock bird and a, uh, a heavily variegated buff hen. Um, so this is one of four from their first round, which I like the look of. I've put them together again. So it's on birds of the week this week. And it's a nest of, of dark birds that have been away feeding themselves now. Still very much a baby. Plenty to like about it though. So we've come to the end of another show. Uh, my thanks for watching. If you've got this far till the end, thanks very much indeed. Uh, if you haven't already, give us a thumbs up, give us a like and subscribe to the channel. We will be out on the road in May. So keep an eye out for bird room visits. And who knows, I may do a couple of bonus episodes of the show as well. Thanks for watching. And until next time, take care.